Hey everyone, I hope you're staying safe and healthy at home. I'm coming to you from my house, but the idea for this video actually came to me while I was visiting my little sister and my parents um, back at my childhood house. Uh, my sister was showing me some of the cool figures and toys that she has, knowing that I love these things as well. I'm a big comic book geek and I love my figurines. So we were looking around and I noticed that she had this really cool vintage shipwreck figure from G.I. Joe from back when I was a kid. I used to collect G.I. Joes, I had vehicles, figures galore, and I thought it was amazing that she had one of these and that she started developing a cool passion for vintage figures as well. So, uh, without permission, I turned into a little kid and I picked up that G.I. Joe and I was like, I gotta play with this, I gotta check it out. And as soon as I picked it up, boom, he broke into pieces. Torso, legs, all that stuff. It just kind of broke apart, just like right now. And I thought, oh my gosh, I just destroyed this figure. My sister's gonna kill me. So, I apologized like a good big brother would. And she reassured me that she bought the figure in great condition, but that over time, the O-ring, which is that elastic that holds a G.I. Joe together, broke apart. So it wasn't my fault. I didn't break the G.I. Joe, but I couldn't just leave the G.I. Joe there broken. I thought, I need to fix this thing, or at least try. And this is where this video comes in. I figured if I'm gonna try and fix a G.I. Joe, replacing the O-ring on it, then why not create a little instructional video out of it showing everybody how to do that. So, for those children of the 80s, like me, if you have some vintage G.I. Joe figures, or at least half of one and maybe the legs and torso of another, then why not know how to replace the O-ring or the elastic on there? Uh, this video will show you how to do that, it will show you how I do it, and I hope you guys learn something from it. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. So for this, you'll need the following. A G.I. Joe, broken preferably. Not broken enough. Still not broken enough. Much better. You'll also need a plumbing O-ring. This will replace the O-ring that came with the G.I. Joe originally that unfortunately snapped. We'll just throw that out there. But it does connect the top and the bottom halves of our G.I. Joe together. You'll also need to keep the screw that comes with the G.I. Joe because that's what attaches the back plate to the top plate and keeps the entire top half of our G.I. Joe together. Let's put that aside. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our plumbing O-ring and our G.I. Joe's legs and hook the O-ring onto that little C-hook that's in between his legs that keeps them together. Once you hook that on, give it a little tug to make sure it's nice and stretched out, but not too stretched out because we don't want to snap it too early. You'll take the middle part of your G.I. Joe and pass that O-ring through that little gap that's right on the bottom there. And once it's through there, give it a little pinch to pass it through to the top. Once you got a good grip on it, give it a little tug, and that's going to join the two halves of the G.I. Joe together, or at least his torso's halves. Then you'll take the back plate of the G.I. Joe and take your O-ring, loop the O-ring around that center post, making sure the O-ring passes in between those two little posts that are there. Those two little posts join the back plate to this chest plate. We'll take the chest plate and we'll just lightly connect it onto there. This next part is going to get a little bit maddening, so if you have a therapist, you might want to give them a call now for some of the guidance. You'll take your G.I. Joe's arm, keeping a nice loose grip on that upper part of the G.I. Joe's body. Snap that in. Don't snap it all the way, though. Loosen it up a little bit, put the next arm in. So now we got our two arms in there. Then take your G.I. Joe's head, rotate it 90 degrees, wiggle it into the top of the neck hole, and then straighten them out, and then snap your G.I. Joe together. And just like that, he's almost fully assembled. We still have one more thing that we gotta do, and that's to take that tiny little screw that we had earlier on, drop that into the screw hole in the G.I. Joe's back, make sure not to drop or lose it, take your hobby screwdriver, and just fasten it all together. Once you're done, your G.I. Joe is back up and running and you can't give a thumbs up because they don't have opposable thumbs. Too bad. So there you have it. That's how you replace the O-ring on a vintage G.I. Joe figure. I'm really happy this turned out the way it did because in all honesty, I've never tried this before and I wasn't too sure if a plumbing O-ring would hold up really well. Thankfully, it held up very well. In fact, better than the original O-ring that comes with the G.I. Joe. I still won't pull on it too hard because if I do, then it's my fault he broke. I'm gonna bring him back to my sister in perfect health, let her play with him, store him, do whatever she wants. At least now he can be displayed in all his full assembled glory. Thanks guys, if you learned something, leave a comment below or leave a like. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.